So I just started a recording. This is a debrief, uh, just about the benefits people experience the, or debriefing. Okay. So uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, would anybody like to start or should I just uh, feel like a teacher again or should I have to pit call on somebody? <laughs> well, I can, I can share then just okay. about the benefits. Um, yeah, I, I appreciate everybody's different uh, seeing and experiencing everyone's different uh, uh, sort of approaches and insights. Like I really enjoyed Shannon, just very personal. Mm -hmm. I always enjoy Andre's more sort of intellectual. So I kind of aspect everybody's got their own sort of unique uh, personality and I, and sort of ways of, you know, sharing. And I really appreciate seeing all those. And um, I, I just feel a lot of hope with these dialogues uh, so that we can build a culture of empathy. So I, I just feel a lot, feel very hopeful about it. Okay. Uh, Carolina? Uh, well, uh, again, we have kind of um, a monolithic group because I suppose everybody believes in empathy here and with empathizing with our enemy uh, or at least trying to do that. Um, but as well as uh, Edwin, I appreciate this different aspects of empathizing about general culture and personal. For me, it's a very important personal point of view because I believe that everything starts in person. Even I'm kind of political activists, social activists, and I believe in big movements. I still believe it has to be start from individual uh, attitude, and well, we were we trying to 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 to, to practice uh, empathy and our personal attitude. Uh, but I'm curious, what would say what would person who who doesn't believe in it would say when hearing us? Well, at Again, we don't have such a person among us, so we don't know what such person would say. Yeah, that's from me. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Shannon, for sharing with us. Thank you. Shannon, do you want to go next? Um, sure. Um, I'm still uh, timid about empathy and how it works, like from if it's from the oppressor to the, the oppressed to the oppressor, I'm scared about that. But um, in general, I agree with Edwin's vision to spread a world of empathy. And I just wanna um, keep practicing and learning from you guys how it works. David? This has been a very fascinating and uh, stimulating discussion for me, and I took notes too. Uh, and uh, as we wind up, I'm reflecting on the medium that we're using of Zoom and how that compares, say, to uh, Facebook uh, text the kind of communication, which is very, very limited in what it can do. This is so much better. Um, however, there's another way that I recently experienced, which was through Dances of Universal Peace, where we were uh, chanting and there was music and we we're holding hands and moving uh, around in circles in a room. And um, it gets beyond words. It gets beyond analysis and it becomes very, very unifying. And I think that Ultimately, this is where we all want to go, and empathy is definitely one of the steps on that road. And I really uh, am interested always in what Edwin's going to do next. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Andre? Um, okay, so my experience is... Um, I am participating probably in the third or fourth uh, circle. 
uh, and I want to emphasize not on empathy, but on the reflective listening. Because to me, it is, uh, it is the essence of, this, um, of these meetings. And um, I think I really cherish it and I really value it. The more I participate, the more I value it. Uh, it's based on my personal uh, inner kind of feeling or sensations that I, um, I, fi I find this, it's very he helpful, healthy, and it's, it's not, it, it kind of leads to the empathy by, by, by going sometimes through the torture of forcing yourself to listen. And, and you know what, I've also noticed that it's not just when you hear something opposite in terms of it doesn't agree with your paradigm. The most difficult thing to listen is when it's boring. When people talk about something uh, that doesn't really attract you. Yeah, but but uh, I, 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 found, I caught myself that there was a... Uh, Sometimes when it happens, there is a, a strong desire to just to withdraw your attention. But I say, I kind of my inner eye said, "No, this is wrong. This is not why you're here. You have to force yourself to listen and try to understand uh, wherever the depth is there. If there's a none, you still have to listen and understand what are these people trying to say, why it is important for them, and the fact that it's not of my interest." When it doesn't attract me, you know, um, it, it is an obstacle, but I have to fight it. And by doing this, I, I, I think I am I'm improving myself. And as a by, uh, byproduct, empathy is byproduct of that process, in my understanding. Because when you do this to yourself, you melt yourself, you kind of, uh, you know, you, you, you do the labor. And it is uh, energy consuming, extremely uh, laborious effort sometimes. But it's, it's, it's great. I think it's great because it really um, helps. And I see also some people that I was involved in some circles, they cannot take it at all. They just cannot do it. Uh, they they withdraw right away. They just cannot stand it. They can uh, ex express when they give them a chance to talk their emotional outburst because they want, oh, this is a chance for me to get hurt, right? I'm going to tell them all, you know, what it is. And then, but they cannot listen. They cannot. They, they don't have that force, the strength in them to force themselves to, you know, to do this labor. So I'm, I'm, the, more, the more I'm participating, the more I'm proponent of that process because I think it's great. So thank you, Edwin. Sure. And um, I just want to say, and for the people who might be viewing, um, we, you might find that we didn't come up with any definitive answers. As a matter of fact, my experience is that we've kind of expanded what is an enemy, what is empathy, uh, there, there are shades of gradation and things like that. Um, and, and that's the experience that is really beneficial. And as I practice, as Andre said, the reflective listening um, and, you know, go on, I find that I am more quickly to apply these empathetic and pro-social uh, strategies in my life, uh, heading off problems, you know, before they happen, being more aware and more proactive and also not taking things so personally. And so for those who are watching, just, just see, there's no answer, but we've all changed here. And I think if you've watched this, you've changed too in seeing how people kind of interact and expand their definitions. Um, and that's it. Okay, well, thank you, Carolina and Bill for facilitating as well. Uh, I have a question, quick question.